Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of January, 2018. And we are four days away from the date that I have flagged as the date to watch for the twins. The twin events. And the reason that I'm interested in twins is because of this book I, I borrowed back in 2015. And I borrowed it because I wrote Red Rain. And two hours later, I was at the library, and I happened to find the book Red Rain. I didn't go looking for it, it just happened to be on the shelf, right next to where I was sitting using the Wi-Fi, using my laptop, and the Wi-Fi at the library. So, a coincidence, a very strange coincidence, on Halloween in 2015. It was a Saturday, and, you know, to find the right. this, um, Saturday... January 6th, it's going to be a hot one, and it was on Black Saturday 2009 that Nathan Breeze lost his life in the bushfires in Victoria. And Nathan's one of the boys who is helping to deliver this uh, prophecy to me, and the other one is Jacob Wetterling, and I'm just really reading it, they've just handed it to me. And I'm just uh, reading off the sheet that there's going to be twin volcanic eruptions on Sunday 7th of January 2018 in Indonesia. Mount Agung and Mount Sinabung, which is Bali and Sumatra. So, twin volcanoes. Now, why would that be? Well, I guess... It is the birthday of a boy I know, this coming Sunday, the 7th of January. Uh, I know a boy who will be turning 15, and the last time I saw him he told me he was doing an assignment at school on volcanoes. So, that's what's got me thinking, it's volcanoes, combined with the twins. And I've had some few things happen lately that's got me thinking, it's got something to do with twins, there's going to be twin signs. And the signs are for Irving, Tropical Cyclone Irving, which is going it's to... It's a mini, to mini tornado. There's no such thing as a mini tornado. There is such a thing as a hurricane, but we don't get hurricanes in Australia. We call them tropical cyclones, same thing, although they spin the opposite way. And Irving, I think, will be the worst cyclone this year. 2017, 2018 cyclone season in Australia, I think Irving will be the one that will make an impression, make a splash, if you will, make some news headlines, and maybe hopefully push a few politicians off the news headlines for a day or two, but then they'll come back again to try and score, you know, score some political points if there's a cyclone made landfall. I mean, you know how it is. Everything, I think everything that politicians do is, is to try and win the next election. And I don't think they care too much about anything else, to be honest. I, I did a partner visa application that I put a huge amount of work into. And it got rejected by immigration. And um, I didn't even get a notification of the rejection. And when I said, what about the seven grand I've paid? Oh, sorry. So they can just do that. Absolute bastards. I mean, I have always voted in good faith. And I've voted for Labour. I've voted Liberal in the past. Next election, I won't be voting for either. I'll be leaving my ballot paper blank. Because I'm pretty disgusted. And that's because of the way I've been treated personally. Um, and it is disgusting. It's horrible. So... Yeah, I hope they do get pushed off the. I, I, I hope they get pushed off the headlines for a lot longer than a couple of days. I would uh, love to see that because they they're all just egomaniacs, stoking their egos. If you ask me, so Irving, Irving, the bad one. Yeah, and. Irving's going to happen, whether, if Irving's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's not because I'm predicting it. It's not because Nathan and Jacob are sending it. 
but the power is in the prediction itself. Being able to make a prophecy is powerful in its own right. And, uh, yeah, I guess the point is to send a message against corrupt politicians and corrupt governments who do the wrong thing by their people. Because it's not just uh, North Korea and Iran that are corrupt and doing the wrong thing by their people. It's also the governments of countries like the USA and Australia. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of deception in this world and it's not necessarily being perpetrated always by the brutal little dictatorships Ish. who are very easy to, you know, you compare yourself, if you've got to compare yourself to Kim Jong-un in order to, to look good, then you're pretty hard up for, you know, a good image in my view because he's just a little tyrant thug and, you know, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy the way things are. If you look at the history of the USA and us and Iran, uh, the, yeah, I won't go into that, but uh, let's just say Iran, Iran, Iran has not always been the bad party in that relationship. And the USA have been far from good at times. So, corruption, political corruption, It's not good. And to be honest, I'm, 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 it bothers me. Human evil bothers me more than natural calamities because at least when you get whacked by natural calamity, you can say, oh well, you know, the earth moved and I was in its way. But when people are cruel to you, it's different. It uh, leaves you with a pretty bad feeling when you're the victim of cruelty by your own government. It's not very nice. And it's the kind of thing that you do potentially want to, you know, reply to. And yes, this prediction is my reply to the Australian government, especially the Department of Immigration and Border Protection. I think what they've done is totally wrong to me as an individual, as an Australian. It's disgusting. And, you know, I would like to think that uh, if, you know, if you vote at the elections, you know, you exercise your democratic right, then you would have a government that kind of, you would hope that you've got the chance to vote for someone that's going to look out for you. Unfortunately, I don't see that in the Liberal Party and I don't see it in the Labour Party. So, yeah, I didn't intend to talk politics, but there you go. I guess that's what's m mo that's my motive for making my predictions, is the injustice that I feel at the hands of authority. At 132-500. Northeast New South Wales was smashed by large and powerful thunderstorms yesterday afternoon, and while locals commented that it felt like a mini tornado. None such weather feature really exists. What we did have, though, was damaging to destructive winds. And Sky News reporter Johanna Marie has more information. A major cleanup effort is underway in the main street of McLean after the town was lashed by a severe thunderstorm. Winds were so strong it ripped the roof off the iconic Clarence Hotel and brought down many trees and power lines. Locals say it was like a mini tornado or a cyclone. <laughs> Just like a mini cyclone. Uh, it's the worst I've seen in 28 years up here, and I've seen a few. It was a bad one. A lot of small tornadoes hit. It uh, only lasted for probably a few minutes, maybe five at the most. Bulldozers have been brought in to clear the debris from the streets as energy crews work around the clock to fix power lines. They hope power will be restored to most of the region by the end of today. Johanna Marie, Sky News, McLean. So what are the signs going to be? Volcanoes? Well, if the connection to the boy John who told me about the assignment he did on t volcanoes, if that was a meaningful coincidence, then yes. Or it could be symbolic, so the twins might be something else that has something to do with fire. Who knows? We will see. 
I did write something about tornadoes yesterday, and then there was this, which I don't think was a tornado, but a supercell thunderstorm can certainly do that, even without generating a tornado. So either way, it was pretty decent, pretty decent storm that hit McLean in New South Wales, Northern Rivers yesterday. Anyway, that's uh, the twin prediction of Nathan and Jacob, and now you know why. what my motive is. I can't speak for them, but my motive is I'm not impressed with the government of Australia. Labour Liberal makes no difference, they're all the same. They just make people's lives difficult, and naturally, people resent it. And... Yeah, you shouldn't play politics with issues like climate change. Just shouldn't do it. You know? Respect facts for what they are. And don't be a complete hypocrite like Donald Trump. And talk about fake news while being the prime dispenser of fake news. Because that's taking hypocrisy to such extraordinary levels that you do have to wonder what hope there is for the world when the world's most powerful nation is being headed up by the world's biggest hypocrite. If you want to know my political views, yeah, I, to be honest, I don't like any of them. I, they've, they've completely lost my, lost my trust, 100%.